today to have two very special guests, um, friends of mine, and I'm going to introduce Peter first because he doesn't want to talk, but um, Peter uh, Aki, uh, he is a rugby player, he's played in the Blues and currently with the Hurricanes, he's also been part of the New Zealand Sevens program. So he's here today to support our actual superstar, Kayla McAllister, who is a friend of mine and she's very generously given up her time to come and talk to us today about her um, experiences at the Rio Olympics with the New Zealand Sevens team. So the New Zealand Women's Sevens team, for those of you who didn't watch it, won the silver medal, which is an amazing achievement. So Kayla's come along today to share um, some inspirational words with us. But I just want to say thank you, Kayla, so much for being here and giving up your time. And we're just going to play a video so that you can see Kayla in action and see just how amazing she is. Thanks, Mr. Lord. And to the start, Bless my heart and bless my soul. As time is on the Um, kia ora everybody, um, I suppose it's 
kind of embarrassing for me watching that, but I guess it's just an inside of women playing rugby. Um, Peter and I are very honoured to be here today, so thanks for having us. Um, first time for me doing high school age, I've been doing primary kids and, and intermediate age, so I'm quite excited to be in front of you guys today. Uh, just basically, just um, where I've started I guess, I, I played netball uh, for 16 years, I'm, oh, I'm 28 years old. I was born in uh, Waitra down in Naki. I uh, lived in Europe for about eight years through my childhood. Came back in 96, went to Red Beach Primary up in Whangaparoa on the coast, uh, Hibiscus Coast Intermediate, and then Westlake Girls was my high school, as well as I did sixth form and a half or seventh in Palmy at Palmy Girls. So yeah, netball was pretty much my sport growing up being a female. Uh, it's the number one sport, I guess, along with hockey for, for girls at school to participate in. Um, so yeah, I played, I've been playing yeah, for 16 years, played some rep level, um, which is where I met this guy, Tal Megan. Um, played a lot of netball with her. Uh, I actually looked up to her when I was younger. She was a couple years older than me, and both mid-quarter. She was very feisty, so I could just tell when she got you all to stand. <laughs> um, so yeah, just basically, today I wanted to share with you and get you guys to ask me some questions of things you want to know about, uh, I guess about the Olympics, but yeah, so four years ago, um, I was still playing netball. I made the Mystics in 2011, had one season with them. Sat on the bench the whole year because I was behind Timapata George, who was, you know, is still one of someone I look up to and still do. I got two minutes in a whole year on the court, um, but that's fine because I was just happy to be there, I guess. And then the next year, in 2000, and end of 2011, I got dropped for the following year, um, which was, you know, pretty hard having a season on the bench, learning heaps, and then getting completely cut. So. Four years ago in 2012, the New Zealand Rugby Union or well, that was confirmed that the Sevens was in the Olympics for 2016, and so that obviously the NZIU. You now we do have women's rugby in New Zealand and the 15s game and the Sevens, but it wasn't, I guess, professional or they hadn't put much money into it or time into it as it is now. So they went around the country a go f go for gold campaign in 2012 uh, around the country, getting any women, girls, young girls, uh, to screening nights. Um, so what involved there was a bit of fitness testing, tackling some tackle bags. And myself and Portia Woodman at the time, four years ago, both being netballers, well, like, let's give it, a, give it a go. She actually made the mistakes and I got, the, I got dropped, but we still went along um, to our first night here in Auckland. And it was um, raining, muddy, dirty, and obviously playing netball, you play indoors, you play in the concrete, but mud, something I had actually never done. Rugby is in my family and it's been around my, my life um, since I was growing up, but I've actually never played it. I was always netball because my mum was from a netball background. So that night was a bit of an eye-opener, um, but I didn't look back and then a month later I made the first team to go to Fiji in the Oceania tournament in 2012. And yeah, so Portia and I have both been converts, just took it with, with both hands and um, there was a few senior girls that had been playing rugby and a few newbies. There was a few hockey girls or sprinters and yeah, I've kind of really not, never looked back. Uh, so in 2012 we, we had no pay, we got nothing, it was pretty much, you still had to have a full-time job, so at the time I was a receptionist in town for the ministry, so I would train at 5 to about 5 a.m. to about 7, get dressed, go to work for 8 hours, another session in the afternoon, and that's just what I did because I wanted to be a part of something that was a legacy and brand new. So 2012 was pretty big and hard work and then 2013 was the Sevens World Cup in Russia, which some of, that, some of the clips showed, and uh, I guess we made that team and we went along to Russia, and I guess it was Rugby Sevens is new around the whole world, where we had the most, I guess the kickstart, because that's what we do in the backyard and we are rugby nation. So obviously we were favourites leading to that tournament and we won the Russia 2013 World Cup. And I guess for me and Portia, we were just like, what is it? You know, what is this? This is something we've never experienced. Um, it's pretty special, and we've both never looked back, and we've continued playing. And then we also have World Series, so you guys probably follow the men's sevens. They travel around the world and have their world circuit. They actually did that for the women, so we got to be a part of that and travel to places like Dubai, Amsterdam, London, France. Where else have we been? Um, my favourite one is probably Dubai, because we actually play alongside the men, so we actually have a crowd. Um, and yeah, so that's been happening every year. And then it wasn't until, I guess, well, the, gap, the goal was to get to 2016, which was the Olympics. But prior to that, in the last four years, we've travelled the world. Um, 
played in many countries, competitions, took out three series, so we actually won. The series just gone, Aussie took it out, and then obviously in Rio they won as well, but I guess just for me is making sure that, I guess trying to, for today, is just encouraging you to play sport, if not rugby, any sport, to keep active, um, but rugby for the females and the males, because that's you know, a big stepping stone for you guys too to go to Rio, but it's actually pretty cool that the women get to do it as well. So. I guess for me, being a convert from netball to rugby, I haven't looked back in the last four years, and, and Rio is pretty special that no one can take away from us. Even just winning a silver is still pretty big for us. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about Rio. So, um, our team got named, or the, we went, 30 of, us, 30 of us went to Fiji in July, and it was pretty much a trial. Uh, we had a pretty brutal training camp, lots of fitness, because that's what Sevens is about. So, it's just never been someone to love fitness personally, but. Um, over the last four years it's got harder every year and you just got to grab it with both hands and just stick it out. So a lot of fitness is involved. Um, and then the girls tend to whinge and moan and whine, including ourselves, our whole team, but at the end of the day you're there to win and, and compete, so you've got to do the hard yards. And yeah, went to Fiji, uh, 30 degree heat, lots of running, played the Fiji girls a couple of games and then our coach named the team in August. Uh, so 14 was named for Rio, so two non-travelling and 12 that were going to be going. I guess with rugby, knowing that it's a physical contact sport, you're pretty much not in Rio until you're on the field. So for us, we had a brutal uh, another month uh, leading up to Rio. And I guess, yeah, making the team and making that 12 was pretty cool. Tell your family and friends. But for me personally, I was not at the Olympics until you took, took your first step on the field. So you can get an injury at training, you can get an injury in, at home or anywhere. So... For me to get over to Rio, we did a, a week in Florida, so um, this is leading up to Rio, so we had a week in Florida because the heat in the States was about 30 degrees. So we had a training camp in Florida as well as the men's, and we just trained every day, uh, twice a day, in two hour sessions on the field. So when we actually crossed over to Rio, um, five days out for our comp, we actually thought it was cold. Um, we thought Rio was cold, and the New Zealand team were like, it's hot as, and we're like, no, it's freezing. Um, we've been in Florida at 30 degrees and Brazil was about 20. So I think for me, we got on the plane, went across to Rio. Um, you can plan and, and picture what's going to happen in front of you, but we, I guess, the sevens. So we have our team and our culture and, and who we are as New Zealand rugby, but then the Olympics is another, another kettle of fish. It's actually a whole New Zealand Olympic team. So you've got the rowers, the kayakers, the Valeries, the Lisa. So we had our own team as well as being part of a big team. So none of us girls had experienced that, because uh, the last four years it's just been about us, and we go somewhere and it's our team. I guess for Rio, the, the biggest thing I thought was pretty cool was being a part of a bigger team. So rubbing shoulders with Lisa or Valerie or the Mahis and all that in one big room is pretty special. So we got to Rio and um, so you hear all the, the, the talks about the village, uh, which us young girls, I mean, I was one of the oldest, I'm 28. so. My group of my sisters were 28 and under, so a few excited girls. Uh, we got there. I got welcomed in by our New Zealand committee, and we're pretty special. Uh, the New Zealand team, uh, New Zealand culture, I think no one has what we have as a, as a country. So we had a welcoming from all the staff that were there. I think you probably heard stories about the village and it not being completed, and the Australians moaning about their tower. So in the actual village, every country had a tower, um, whether that was uh, I guess Australia, the States, they had a whole tower to themselves because there's so many athletes, but little countries, um, you know, Ireland, they shared a t our tower because we had two floors at the bottom that were free and so some towers had two or three countries or being the States, they had two whole towers to themselves. So we got welcomed in um, with a little porphyry from our actual New Zealand staff. So the staff that were on ground before any athlete arrived, doing the plumbing, doing the cleaning, fixing things that were happening. Well, other countries were complaining, but our, our New Zealand team um, took it in their own hands and did it for us and cleaned it up and got welcomed in. I uh, guess other countries, they'd all do a haka, so other countries were looking out of their towers watching every time they'd see our welcoming for all athletes, and then we were given a pronamu as well. So every single athlete all got a, a green stone as well, so that was pretty special for us girls. And then, because we were the first, with the Olympic Games opening, we were actually the next day. So we were one of the first lot of athletes to arrive in our village, and then, uh, yeah, we started, let's go get crazy and find famous people. So we got two days off, uh, we got to the village as a team and just find our way around the place, it pretty much was a city. Um, we had bikes, so the Advanti had donated bikes to our team, so we had them at the bottom and you jump on bikes and bike around. 
to the food hall around the place and parks. Uh, it was literally an actual city inside a, a city, so all gated community security and everything. And then, uh, yeah, we were just trying to um, swap pins and find famous people, and we got a bit ex too excited, some of us, so we got told to calm down a bit because uh, it is energy draining. So, yeah, I think we got had to find our feet. It's pretty pretty surreal biking around um, you know, Tyler Nathan Wong. If you some of you know, she was here and I were like, this is amazing. And then. Then it was time to get into the hard work and we started training for three days. Three days of hard training and then uh, sign off, captain's run, and then it was the opening ceremony, which unfortunately we actually missed because we played the next day. So we just sit in our uh, lounge and watch, watch it on TV, uh, which is fine. Um, and then, yeah, it was game day and uh, knowing, I think the only thing that, nothing changed for the game in terms of the tournament because we've been doing that uh, for the last four years. It just was on a bigger stage. Um, and I think for me personally, it was just the, um, the last four years we travel the world and we play tournaments, but we have no crowd in terms of New Zealand family, no family or friends that come, because obviously we travel quite far away. And in Rio, for the first time, we would run out and look up to the left of the stand, and there was about 60 Kiwis and black, all the girls' families, friends, uh, the boys' families as well, and we had a big cheer squad, which is for the first time. So I guess and that was pretty special for us girls. Um, and then, yeah, the tournament happened. We did pretty well. We built each game. Two games over three days. And then I guess day, day three is the big one that you want to get to. Uh, we won the quarterfinal, which meant we were on the podium. Uh, the semi, sorry, which meant we were on the podium against Australia. And I guess uh, leading up to the Australian game, we actually shared changing sheds. And we, cha we shared with uh, USA. And they were out on the field warming up for their game. And, our coach jumped into his changing shed and got a whiteboard and had something written on it. And he came in and showed us and said, we had a quarterfinal against USA, uh, a night game, and that was really our toughest game. We won 5-0. And we had six players at one stage with about a minute and a half to go, and if they'd scored, converted, they would have won. So that was a big game for us, but we came through. And um, the next day, our coach got his board, and we read it, so he read it out, and it said, um, all Blacks vs USA back in Chicago a couple of months ago uh, had 4.4 million viewers watching their game. In our game, New Zealand vs USA on that quarterfinal was 8.8 .8 million viewers. And so we all looked at that and were like, um, okay, it's a pretty, pretty big stage. And we took a lot from that knowing that one, we're not growing, we're also growing the game, but also um, you know, people are actually watching women's rugby in the game sevens. We took that on board, a bit of confidence, and then had Australia in the final, uh, obviously it's a harder because it's a longer game, not, not 14 minutes, it's 20. We did all we could, we left it all on the field and we came away with the silver. Um, I guess, being me and being the girls, you know, we, we weren't happy at all, we were pretty gutted and devastated and upset and um, got back to the, you know, upset in the changing sheds and I was really talking to each other and got a medal and we're like, um, you know, it's a medal and then got back to New Zealand village and we had a big welcoming for us. Um, Everyone was so excited, happy, congratulating us, and that's when we kind of thought, okay, this is actually a big deal. Because, um, you know, us being us, we wanted to get a goal, because that's what we strive for, is to win, but we didn't. But being the Olympics and actually getting a medal, um, I'm slowly accepting. Um, it is actually, places like this come here, and it's actually a big deal to have a medal. Over 10,000 athletes were in that, in that games, and not everyone gets a medal, so for us to even get on the podium to come home with a medal, and the first time the, you know, the Olympic New Zealand team has done its best in terms of medal count, it was pretty special to be a part of that as well. So, um, yeah, that's um, a little story, but I just want you guys to ask some Q&As, because I'll answer your questions, which is probably easier if you guys want to know about anything. But, yeah, I guess for me it's a pathway for women and men in rugby to get to the Olympics, which is pretty special. So.